How much have we given this program? How much liquor have we spilled in parking lots of road games, tailgate? Then the game starts and we lose by 40. How much time have we wasted on recruiting alone? You got grown men trying to decipher the social media posts of teenagers. You got 401ks, man. What are we doing? Trying to find out, does his mom want him to stay home? Does his mom want him to leave? I haven't talked to my own mom in a month. What's wrong with us? Why do we care so much? One time, I fell asleep face down in my laptop. My wife found me, opened the screen. She was worried she was gonna find porn or something worse. It was a recruiting video of a 300 pound Bahamian guard. We're sickos, man. We got problems. We've been giving our self-respect putting on ties, dressing like Al Golden, posting memes of Manny Diaz dressed as Scarface. And then we get embarrassed, we come right back to the next one. What are we gonna learn? We got people giving hundreds to recruiting websites when you got the goods on Kane's Insight for free. We've been treating this program like a big time program for 15 years. And it's about time that this program starts treating itself that way. And that's why all this spending, all this change, it's overdue. We've been given. We've been given without getting anything back. And now finally, we're getting something. Something for the people that waste their Saturdays, their beautiful Saturdays with their family, sitting in a stadium in the heat, watching a struggle with a Mac team, who sat in the crowd at FIU to watch that embarrassment. Who sat in the Fiesta Bowl and saw those fireworks go off. Who spent all their work day arguing with internet strangers for no reason. We've been giving. It's about time that we start getting from this program. It's just long overdue. We deserve what's about to happen. And you know, I'm a little lost because I'm used to coming on this podcast and constructing all these angels in the outfield scenarios where we're good somehow. This time it's a lot easier because all I got to say is we've got money. Nick Saban went to a press conference and said that Miami is spending too much money on NIL. Nick Saban, the biggest cheater since Bobby the Brain Heenan, is complaining about Miami paying players. And that's how you know that things are different. Because Nick Saban knows, just like every coach in the country knows, that when everything is equal and the playing field is truly level and the money's the same and the NCAA is in shambles and can't protect the SEC anymore, that nobody anywhere in America can do anything to stop the Miami Hurricanes. What 18-year-old wants to live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? What 18-year-old wants to live in Clemson, South Carolina? Would you rather go on a water slide with Dabo or a jet ski with a girl that looks like J-Lo? A fat ass in Tuscaloosa is a donkey that ate too much. You want to go in a pond and fish for bluegill? Or go in the ocean and fish for blue marlin? That's the difference. You know, Alabama reminds me of the guy at the Heat game. That fat guy in the Tommy Bahama shirt, gut sticking out. And he's got a 20-year-old Russian by his side. You think she's there for the love? You think if the money was the same, she'd go there? Of course not. And that's recruiting now that we got Mario Cristobal. This is big business. 
There's no more fun and games. No more gimmicks. No more chains. You know what big business is? Big business is that when you like Clemson's facilities, you write a check and take their athletic director. Big business is you need an offensive coordinator and you get the National Coordinator of the Year Award winner by writing a check. Big business means you go head to head with Phil Knight and take Mario Cristobal. And you know, look at history. What's Miami's historic weakness? Recruiting offensive line. And we just got the best offensive line recruiter any of us have ever seen. You know what happens when Miami has an elite offensive line? It's only happened once. It was the greatest team in the 153 year history of college football, 2001. That's what Miami's capable of when Miami's recruiting at the big boy level. This isn't little money. This isn't Nevin Shapiro money. We went from Benny Hanna's to Bimini and Bahamas, spending big boy money for big boy recruiting. We're getting Samoans, man. The Miami Hurricanes are signing Samoans. We got half a Samoan once, and he was the biggest star in the history of planet Earth. Imagine an army. Big boy football means that you get a defensive coordinator like Kevin Steele. This isn't promoting one of Manny Diaz's interns. This is getting a guy that's been to Alabama, Clemson, coach under Tommy Osborne, nasty defenses at Auburn. That's big boy football. It's not Coach D'Onofrio where he gets fired from Miami and then goes to work at Kendall Boys and Girls Club. Writing up plays on the back of a kid's menu at Tony Roma's. Those days are done. We've upgraded. We're talking about the best staff that money can buy. We got Coach Ogeron coaching for free. Ed Ogeron is coaching for free. We're paying Coach O less than FSU's paying Willie Taggart. We got Joe Salavea just coached a top five pick. Kevin Smith just had one of the best running games in the country at Ole Miss. Coach Adai's fresh off the national championship. Even our special teams coordinator is NFL. That's big business. We got Alonzo Highsmith running our personnel department. You know, I gotta say, between Highsmith, Mirabal, Cristobal, I love Columbus now. I hope that my son doesn't get into Belen just so I can send him to Columbus. But you know, I'm kind of tired of coming onto this podcast and trying to pump us up with these Rocky stories. The media is treating us like a, like a plucky underdog. Miami is not an underdog. Miami is an empire. All these people that say they love us or want us back, they're going to hate us the second we get on top. Because Miami, with money, is unfair. And that's how we're supposed to be. We got legends walking the sidelines. We got gold jackets. Ed Reed, Jason Taylor. We got our own legends watching practice. You know where FSU's legends are? Like Deion Sanders? They're out there stealing FSU's own recruits laughing at him and they're broke as a god dang joke the booster club is taking out ppp loans the players had better nil deals in the 90s they're over and they're saying to themselves just like the gators are saying to themselves man i wish our program took football as seriously as miami takes football Meanwhile, we're sitting here relaxed. I gotta tell you, I usually have the Beluga Gold on the podcast. I quit. Canes aren't driving me to drink. I'm drinking Evian water, clear as the French Alps. Cause I know what Miami's bringing. I know the two most important positions in college football 
quarterback and defensive line. Loaded. Tyler Van Dyke putting up Joe Burrow numbers. 300 yards, six games in a row, three touchdowns. Burrow's the only one that did it in the playoff era. And he did it with two all pros. Van Dyke's doing it with undrafted free agents. Defensive line loaded, loaded with transfers. Akeem Mesador, all conference. Mitchell Agude, all conference. Daryl Jackson, six foot six, 320 pounds, seven foot wingspan. The guy looks like a giant. He should have been wrestling Hulk Hogan in the 1980s. That's what we're bringing up front. So you can talk about Jimbo, Dabo, whatever country bumpkin you want to put in front of us. Miami is coming to remind the world that they're serious now. And when Miami's serious, everybody else takes notes and starts complaining and starts whining because they know what's coming. They know the storm is coming. And they know that it's only a matter of time before the Miami Hurricanes are back where they belong on top. Kane's insight, it's okay to believe again. Come back, come back. It's safe out here. Shout out Duasso, Luca to the U, Kane's words booming, and we're finally back, baby. Go Kane's. Today, I started love. Said I'm right back where I really always been. I got over you just long enough to let my heart ache me. And today, today, I started love. What a fool I was to think that I could get by With only these few million teardrops I cried I should have known the worst was yet to come Today, I started loving you. 